All right, welcome to the presentation on CEA study abroad in engineering in Rome. Uh, very excited that you chose to hear about this program. And we are happy to be one of the Texas Tech engineering partners for you to, to choose to, to go on your study abroad program. Um, Rome is a really exciting city. We've had a lot of Texas Tech students do this program in the past and had really great experiences. Um, so let's get started. So first of all, I don't know if anyone here has, has been to Rome. Um, and for those, I'll pretend as if no one has. <laughs> but uh, luckily, Rome is one of those great cities, uh, great global cities around the world that everyone knows about ancient Rome, but it's also a really great modern city. Um, so the, the, you can see my pointer, right? Am I moving around? Okay. So this is sort of one of the oldest parts of Rome right in here. And uh, right here is the neighborhood of Prati. So you, when you study abroad with CEA, you, we have a study center. Uh, and the study center is where you take the classes. Um, and we try in Rome to house our students fairly close um, to the study center. So we have everything all within this neighborhood, which is between the Vatican and the river. And is it the, it's called the Tiber, right? Tiber River? Yeah. Um, so it's called the Prati neighborhood. And so a study center, the CEA study center is staffed with a number of individuals who are mostly Italian and they, uh, are there as your resource, as the staff on the ground for this program, including we hire faculty to teach the courses. The courses are uh, on a US transcript and, and it really eases the transferability for these courses in this program. And luckily these courses, as you'll see a little bit later have been approved by Texas Tech uh, and they fit into your degree plan. So that, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about housing but uh, this is, it's kind of hard to tell on here, but it's really only what, like Piazza Navona, which is this really nice plaza right in here, it's probably 10, 15 minutes max to get walk from the CEA Center. And there's all sorts of great cafes and really cool open plaza there. But uh, so we, in Rome has a really poor transportation system because every time they dig to try to make a metro, they find more archeological sites. And so because of that, we, we actually used to have all of our students housed a little spread out around the city to kind of get to know other neighborhoods. But, but we decided to uh, have, because of the commute times, it's really great that you can just walk to the center uh, from any of your housing. And I always think it's funny how our, my map accidentally put this star in the Vatican because you definitely can't live in the Vatican. <laughs> um, so this is the CEA Rome Center and it, it occupies two floors in this building. And uh, so it's really different than what you're experiencing here. It's just right in the city. Um, there's a cafe on the bottom floor. It's a real neighborhood cafe and CEA students get a discount there. You can get the CEA Wi-Fi in there and hang out. Um, your classes would be upstairs from there. Um, but there's a lot of a uh, lot of things to do around this area. And it's like I said, it's really close to cross the river and get into the old part of Rome. But this is a true Roman neighborhood that you'd be living in. So it's not necessarily like the tourist experience. You can really experience Rome. You're very, very close to the tourist experience too. So you can see all the cool stuff that you want to be in Rome for. So the Rome Center is, like I said, occupies two floors. We say the first and the second because that's the first floor above the ground floor. The ground floor is the bottom floor. And um, we have, you guys can't see, <laughs> administration and faculty uh, rooms and staff rooms on the first floor so with some classrooms and the classrooms on the second floor. Um, but it's just a full, it's, it's, it's not huge, but it's got everything that you need. Um, it's got plenty of classrooms and every, all of the courses that you'll be taking will be here. And it's kind of a hub for activities as well. And for just coming and hanging out and uh, using our staff as a resource. 
So speaking of our staff, these are our core staff. There's a couple others that kind of float in and out, um, but these are uh, our wonderful Rome staff. Anna Felberbaum has been our center director longer than I've been at CEA, and I've been at CEA for 10 years. Actually, I think most of these people have been at CEA longer than I have. <laughs> and, and some of them teach as well, uh, but you can see we have a basically full services. Um, there's always someone on call for emergencies. Um, we have Alexandra Massini, who's actually recently been, not really in the news, but the G20 summit, which is in Rome right now, Alexandra actually led them on some cultural excursions, like the actual leaders. She met Angela Merkel and uh, Boris Johnson, and apparently the, the Bidens couldn't make the, that particular thing, but uh, she was, she met like all these global That's leaders. That's so cool. I know, it's really cool. So she's like a true talent, then we were lucky to have her. And we, Allie and I were in Rome three years ago, three and a half years ago, and she mm -hmm. led us on a walking tour of old Rome and like, it's no joke. I mean, she's legit. She, she knows everything about every tiny little thing. If you ask one little question, uh, she knows about it. Like it could be a nail you find on the street or something. And she's like, oh, well that's, that nails from the Roman era of 1000 BC. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'll go on. <laughs> so this is an engineering program and you do study abroad. Um, there's a lot of fun to be had, but you really wanna make sure that you focus on getting some courses that will satisfy a, a, a part of your degree plan. So some of the ones that we highlighted are all the engineering courses that we offer, um, thermodynamics, chemical thermo, materials, um, fluids and circuits. So we also have elective courses. So you take, you can choose one to two of the engineering courses. Um, plus the uh, culture of food and wine Italy is the one I always highlight because it's the most popular, um, but there's also a lot of other elective options, uh, including art and archeology span in, in Rome, which is, uh, what does that satisfy the requirement? Multicultural. Multicultural. So that's helpful to know. And oh, before, I, uh, do you want to talk about what you were saying about in the Paris one? Oh, yes. Of course. Um, so in a previous session, a student asked a question about the balance of classes in the summer. Like, should you take two engineering classes, one engineering class and one non? Like, what, what should you do? And it really depends on the student as well as on, you know, your funding requirements. If you need financial aid for the summer, you do need to be in six hours, as well as if you need um, some specific classes, some scholarships require you be in six hours for the summer on your study abroad program. So if that's the case, I would recommend you know, one engineering course and perhaps, you know, art and archaeologies of ancient Rome because it would fulfill your multicultural credit, but perhaps you're a chemical engineer and you're like, I have to take thermo and fluids or I'm going to be behind. So then you could, it will, it will be work, <laughs> but you could do um, chemical thermodynamics and like fluid mechanics together. Mm -hmm. Or if you're not really worried about funding and using financial aid and maybe having some limited scholarship opportunities because of the credit hours, you could just take one class. Um, yeah, that's totally but okay. it, is, it is up to you, the student, but I will kind of be like, that's a lot or go for it um, mm -hmm. as part of our advising meeting. Yeah, it's just, we just try to help students make understand the balance of academics versus uh, activity and getting to know the city, which is what we'll talk about in just a minute. But first, uh, we'll look at the housing. Um, so I like to put this housing in here because this is sort of like the standard kind of housing where 
it's a you know they're not very new buildings but they're they're up to date enough and they're pretty nice really and actually we have much nicer housing than this uh, that actually that you might be able to get we have had texas tech students before in our on our what i think is the best um, almost luxury housing it's just sort of a luck of the draw um, but it, like i pointed out before the housing is all fairly close to the cea center i would say 20 minutes walking max but some some of it's even like five to eight minutes away um, and you would be housed with other CEA students. If you have friends that you know that are going, you can make requests to room with them. But we also, if you don't have anybody, we, we, we do have you fill out a housing preference form uh, once, once you've already applied through Texas Tech, then when you're working with CEA, um, you send out, you, you uh, fill out the housing preference and try to match you with roommates of similar interests and sort of like activities. Um, so then about activities in terms of what's included with the program, first of all, we always try to do active learning activities, which is defined really by stuff that uh, is a little bit more associated with what we study. You know, if we're having engineers come in from all different majors and all different schools around the country. Um, but we have found some cool things like the ancient thermal complex um, of the Baths of Caracalla. And I don't know anything about trade gens market, but um, if we had a past student in here, they could tell us what that is. But uh, pretty cool, interesting, you know, ancient Rome, there's plenty of interesting stuff there. But um, so we try to associate things with the, with, with the courses or at least with the area of study but also um, plenty of opportunities of just learning about the culture of Italy and Rome and other, other little areas outside of Rome. So we will have excursions, um, weekly activities, sometimes overnight trips are there, but uh, it might just be a couple day trips that you go on. And it opens you up to, to see new things around Italy that you may not even consider because we know students are gonna travel. So we do some, some trips to places that they might not go to. Um, like the, the gardens of Nympha and doing a bike ride on the ancient Appian Way. Um, those are a couple that are outside of the city. Uh, but then of course we have all the cultural activities with, and those are typically in the city. Um, very, very popular one is the pizza and gelato crawl, which I kind of want to go do right now. Um, I did feel like crawling after eating so much pizza and gelato when I did that. Um, and then we, you know, we usually have a foreign state trip. Uh, it's a long way over there, but it's a, it's actually a pretty, pretty fast train. So <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. Um, the pasta making class, something I like to point out because a past Texas tech student recreated that on campus and uh, as sort of an event to showcase his experience and to kind of promote study abroad. Um, so that was pretty cool. And that's always a fun thing to bring home a skill to have to impress the family and friends. Um, so what's next? Uh, this was a very quick overview of what the program is like, and we'll be here for questions. But first, I'm gonna let Ali talk about the process of, of advising and applying for a CEA Rome program. Sure. So I'm going to put some things in the chat for everyone. And those are going to be related to the IEP website, which is kind of the first step for what you should be reviewing, looking at. You can find all of your program options there, as well as the program page for the CEA in Rome. And while on here, you'll see like that you need to fill out the advising application. You access that through the program page. And if you click on that second link that I put in the chat, it will talk about the budget, the majors, the fact that the program requires the COVID-19 vaccination, um, as well as the link to the CEA website. You are welcome to look at the CEA website. I think it's a super helpful resource for you to have. But while you are looking on it, you will see a different program fee 
than what you see on the Texas Tech website. And that is because we are part of a cohort agreement for this and other um, some other summer CEA programs. And so you will first apply and be approved by Texas Tech. And then I send your information if you choose to do a European program with CEA to CEA directly and they add you into their system. So you are not paying the $95 application fee. You are receiving a discount off of the price that is listed on CEA's website. And so you will see the estimated cost on the TTU website. That's kind of what you should budget with. And to begin the process, you would select start application on that program page because it does not put you in any specific program. It puts you in the advising application, which is the first step to going abroad. You'll complete that. You'll meet with me. We'll discuss your options. And then you're moved into your program specific application. It is your program specific application that is due March 1st. And in your program specific application, you will indicate what classes you wanna take. You will show proof that you've applied for a passport or that you have a passport. Passport processing times are currently like 11 weeks. So if you are thinking about going abroad in summer 2022, or really in 2022, excuse me, please, please, please begin that process now. Texas Tech does have a passport office on campus. And I did put that information in the chat as well. Yeah, and so once yeah. <laughs> you've applied uh, with Texas Tech and Ali sends, if it's Europe program and Rome program, Ali sends that information over to CEA. They will uh, create a My CEA account where it's really easy to follow the instructions on, on any other documentation you might need, like you uploading your passport info, giving your course preferences, putting your housing preference form in there, and you, you get assigned a CEA advisor. And we work with you in that pre-departure phase until you go abroad. Um, so that's really the, the bulk of the presentation. You know, I wanted to reserve some time for questions, and I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop the recording, and then we can, we can do some questions. <laughs>